All right, so yesterday we left off talking about straight mineral oil, right? It's just mineral oil in a can with a little bit of, just a tiny bit of additive to help it pour better. So there's somebody out there. <clears throat> no, I don't think so. For the most part, it's mineral oil is used to do what? Break in. Break in. All right. So I forgot that I was going to do this, so I did it like a second ago. And, you know, take a lesson from your playbook. Just Google it. So what is the generative AI said? The theory behind using mineral oil for break-in is that without additives, more metalware particles stay in the ring belt area. It doesn't cart off the, the stuff, like I was saying. These particles act as lapping compounds to wear in the new cylinders and rings. The increased friction causes controlled wear to take place. This process helps to smooth rough, just machine metal surfaces. It thoroughly prepares the internal. So what I was saying is it doesn't cart off the stuff, the contaminants, the little pieces of metal. And so those little pieces of metal act as a lapping compound. So, again, shitty oil that allows things to rub and wear. That's the saying. It'll wear in or wear out. So it's supposed to wear in at this point, right? You guys don't look thrilled. It makes sense. Okay. I'm surprised AI came up with that. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> well, I had to tell it to say that, so it's not impressive. All right. So we talked about... Straight mineral oil, all right, so straight mineral oil, when we're looking at that, it's like Aeroshell 80, Aeroshell 100. It's just Aeroshell and then 80 or Aeroshell 100. See how that works? Okay, then there is, once you've broken an engine in, and that's usually 25 to 50 hours, then you move on to the oil you use for the rest of its life, which is called ashless dispersant. Sometimes we just call it AD oil because AD stands for ashless dispersant. <clears throat> it is the same thing that we just had a second ago. It is just mineral oil, but they took that and they put other stuff in it. They put additives in it or detergent, if you will. Um, so, and the word ashless becomes what they, the additives that they put in to that oil, if you took just those additives and put them in a beaker and you burnt it, what would be left over has no ash. Ash is bad when it burns in an engine because it can cause, uh, I was gonna say combustion, it can cause detonation. So you don't want anything in the oil that could cause detonation. So we use an ashless dispersant oil. Uh, all right, so our ashless dispersant would be like aeroshell, W80. See, yeah. There's no additives. They said you burned the additive. Oh, okay. There was no additive. So, yeah, no ash because there's no additive. So, W80 or W100. What does W stand for? Wait, wait. Stands for ashless dispersant. Yeah. <laughs> that is what it stands for. W indicates AD or ashless dispersant. Oh yeah, and I was just gonna say about that. Um, in automotive, the W means winter. So like 25 W50. So the W is, I don't know, it does not mean winter for us. It's just a weird thing. And um, that's a good question. Let me take a look at something. What is um, Phillips? 
Phillips uh, XC Mineral. Type M. Nope. So type M is their base mineral oil, just mineral oil. And it says 25W50. And that is just pure mineral oil, if I'm not mistaken. So you're still going to get the W. So when it's a multi-grade, the W still comes in the beginning. How's that for confusing? Let me see. Also, it's a multi-grade. I thought the, is it just got just arrow shell that's this tree leaf? No, no, there's several multi-grades. I'll, I'll come back around to multi-grades. Let me see. XC, where's my M? Oh, come on, I wanted M. Let's see. Well, what would be the point of putting the W if it was... It was just their straight mineral. What is what? Hang on, I'm trying to get rid of the damn, you know. Okay, fine, cookies. Um, where's my M? Products. Engine oils. Go ahead while I'm screwing around up here. No, that's what I'm doing right now. So they're type M. Type M oil is an ashless, oh, ashless is a non-dispersant multi-grade engine oil recommended. This is the only oil I know that would be potentially, um, operator prefers a mineral oil based engine that does not contain, there we go. So the type M, for Phillips, they make a type M, which is, it says right here, it is, does not contain dispersant additives. So it's a multi-grade straight mineral. So you can get it, which is weird. I don't know anybody who- put the W. So, and, the, and the W is there. Yeah, why, like why, if it's just straight mineral anyway? I don't know. Like what's, I thought the whole point of the W was to tell you that it was an actual- No, that'd be W in the front, not- W in the front. Okay. Or whatever. Okay. W80. Is that just aerosols that does that too? It's not. Yeah. W? It's just aerosols. Yes, aerosols. Yeah. That's weird. But they're the only. They're the ones that offer the straight weight. All right. Term ashless means that if all the additives are burned in a beaker, there would be no ash remaining, and non-ash compounds are usually metallic compounds. Metallic compounds in a combustion chamber cause hot spots and pre-ignition. So, um, what was that? Ashless. Means when additives are burned, they leave no ash behind. Because the ash, according to this, is a metallic compound. That is bad. So dispersant. Means, dispersant means that the oil suspends contaminants in the oil and carries them to the oil filter. It disperses the contaminants into the filter. Means it carries, or yeah, it carries, or suspends, it suspends. Suspends contaminants in the oil, in the oil, and carries them to the filter. All right, with me so far? All right, so if we're talking aeroshell or the two types of oils, we have mineral. Well, we have one type. We have mineral. That's it. We got a mineral oil so far. And that mineral oil can either be plain mineral oil or have additives in it. 
right? And the and the additives, when you put the additives, it call it's called an ashless dispersant oil. So what what oil is this right here? Stray mineral. Stray mineral. mineral. This would be ashless dispersant. dispersant. This one is used for unless turbocharged. This would be used for after break in or after break in, in or breaking in a turbocharger. All right. So those are our, our two straight weights. Then we can talk about multi viscosity oils. All right. Now step further multi viscosity so these would be the the most common multi viscosity oils out there so most multi viscosity so this will be a little more confusing so ashless dispersant did i get everything i think uh, yeah i did okay then we have the multi viscosity oils multi do they ever mix oil you can mix oil all the manufacturers their oil is built in Met meets a mill standard J something or another. I forget what it is off the top of my head. But they all meet the same mill standard. So it's perfectly acceptable to mix all of the aviation oils. You do not have to worry about it. So my engines broke in. So would I use mineral oil, some straight mineral oil? No. no, but let's say I, I land to get some get fuel and I check my oil and I'm low and I need oil real bad. And the guy says, all I got is a Quart of mineral oil. Am I good to put it in there? Yep. Absolutely. So all I got a quart that came out of the pickup truck. I use my diesel. I want that? As long as it's the same weight, though, right? Or is it no, weight doesn't matter. Could I use car oil? No. No. Nah, you're not supposed to, but <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have car oil than no oil. Okay, multi viscosity oils. Uh, here's some of my examples. Uh, Aeroshell makes one. Aeroshell W15W50. Let me see if that's exactly correct. Do they call it that? They do. W15W50. So what's that W right there mean on the front? Ashless, Ashless disperse it. All right. But that's kind of their way of doing things. All right. W15W50. Uh, W15, um, this is a semi-synthetic. Oil. According to my notes, it's a 50-50 blend. Yeah, the first W is for the AD. Second W indicates the weight of the oil at zero degrees F. Some people say it stands for winter, but it doesn't. So, let me see where I'm at. B. Well, I'm at B. I don't know. Oh, because it was A. There we go. Uh, first W. First W uh, is for AD. Second W um, indicates indicates weight of oil at zero degrees F. I wrote in there. Some people say this W stands for winter. It doesn't. It stands for the weight. All right. So that's one one type of semi-synthetic. Very popular semi-synthetic. And we're going to come back around to why it's so popular and some other additives in it. Um, one. So number two would be my favorite. Phillips XC 20W50. This is a full non-synthetic. So what kind of oil is it? Mineral. Full, it's a mineral, ashless dispersant or straight mineral? Straight mineral. Ashless dispersant. How do you know? Because it says it. Because I just told you, that's all. <laughs> that's about all you know. And I told you my story about how this is what I use. I use this to break in engines and run it from... Cradle to grave, if you will, the whole life of it. And this is pretty much what I've been running in my airplane, but I've been experimenting a little bit with uh, just straight 50 weight in mine. Um, I ran some Aeroshell uh, W100 Plus, which I probably shouldn't have. We'll get into why. And then I went back to the XC2050 
because uh, we're in winter. But my, I don't know, just to be honest, I've never been in love with the way my oil pressure reacts in my aircraft. I wish it was about 10 PSI higher, but it just isn't. And so I'm probably just going to go to a straight 100 weight and see how that reacts to it, uh, especially in the summer, even though theoretically this is 100 weight oil, right? Because the 50 is, SAE 50 is the same as what weight? 100 weight. 100 weight. So, yeah. So. Is that what you put in during your annual? 2050? Yeah, the blue bottles. Yeah. Uh, okay, multivis. Let's see, multi. Multiviscosity oils use additives that allow the oil to act like two different oils. Uh, when you read the engineering stuff on this, it's like, huh, what? Um, but kind of in a nutshell, and I did hear the, the spaghetti analogy, and I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So you, you get a piece of spaghetti, of course it's hard, it's brittle, um, but you throw it in a pot of boiling water, and what does that spaghetti do? It softens, but it expands. expands. Well, of course it expands, I think, because it absorbs the water, but, um, but they say it's very similar to that. It has molecules, uh, long chain molecules in the oil that when they heat up, they expand. And that's what you get the thickening agent in there. So, uh, let's see, additives, I'll write that. Act like spaghetti, like. Which is to say, when cold, uh, it's small. And when hot, uh, it gets fat. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything other than spaghetti that does that, so I left it at that. Uh, let's see. Additives. Oh, yeah. So the additives do wear. Additives. Additives wear so that viscosity change is not linear. Which is to say, as these additives wear, I'm led to believe that it, the oil is not going to have the thickening properties and start going towards the 20. So in my mind, and I'm not saying this is totally accurate, but this is the way you know I see it, is you start with the 20 weight oil, you dump in these molecules and stuff, and then when these molecules heat up, it causes this 20 weight oil to act like 50 weight oil. So it's not really 50 weight oil, because you can't start with 50 weight and put something in it that makes it thin. And, and with temperature, water, fuel, I guess, but um, that'll be it, fuel. Uh, let's see. So, um, let's see. Uh, so why would I want a multi-viscosity oil? What's the benefits of that? The expansion of the, in, of the components in the engine, it helps to look the gaps between parts. Yeah, why do you want it thin than thick? It's tighter clearances when it's cold than when it's... There we go. So hot. during starting and cold operation, Uh, let me see. During starting, oil acts like the lower number. The oil acts like the lower number, um, which would be faster lubrication at starting. Uh, which would mean less wear. And during normal operation at temp, the oil acts like the thicker number. So, let me see. At operating temps, oil acts like larger number. So, my airplane has two, two problems that I, I do not care for. One is that uh, I wish that my oil pressure was higher. I don't like that it's lower. It's in the green. Green is green. I just am funny about things. I want it like top of the green. I don't want middle of the green. I want top of the green. So 
when I got it, the owner was running the Philips M, which honestly was the first time I'd ever seen that oil. But would you remember, would you remember what the 2050 M was? Philips X, the XC 2050 M? Straight mineral oil. So the engine had close to 200 hours since overhaul. He's still running it on, I don't know if I had that much. Uh, still running on straight mineral oil, 2050. He's running 2050. Was that a good choice? No. Why not? No, it's a multi-viscosity. We're just talking strictly about 2050 multi-viscosity. So the first question was, should he have been running mineral oil? The answer is, no. should have changed it over to ashless dispersant by now. All right, second question is, was 2050 the right oil to be using? Sure. Why not? In Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Ah, this guy remembered, Minnesota. So was that the right stuff to be using in Minnesota? I would say yes. It gets rather cold there. So Minnesota. So yeah, why not? So just should have switched over to the XC uh, ashless dispersant, but that's fine. All right. So given that if I have two problems I don't like, one is that my oil pressure is lower than I wish it would be. And number two, my oil runs colder than I wish it would. Mm. Is my problem too. My engine runs nice and cool. Uh, well, a lot of, you know, it's a wonderful problem to have. Uh, so many people are out there, they can't climb at uh, the normal climb speed. Like, I would climb out at 85 miles an hour or 85 knots. A lot of people can't do that. They have to stop and go level to get more air into the cowling to cool the engine. I don't. I can just set it and climb. I shouldn't have, but I ended up, I promised somebody I'd take them to Bakersfield in the middle of summer. We landed. It was 110 on the tarmac. And, you know, my, my airplane doesn't have air conditioning, but you don't need it once you're up in altitude. And I couldn't wait to get out of there, man. I just, when we, when we finally left, man, I just, the power to it, and I pointed the nose up, and I just kept watching that cylinder head temp, and it was just like, keep going, man. I'm fine. I got no problems. Um, and the oil temp was still kind of cool. So if I use a multi-viscosity and I'm running cooler than normal, what is the oil going to do? Be thinner. That's what I'm thinking. It's going to act like the thinner. So I'm, gonna, I'm 20, 10, 20 degrees colder than I wish I was in my oil. So I don't know. You know, I don't have the engineering data to know when it peaks and goes to 50, when it doesn't. Why so. don't you just run the straight weight then? Why don't you run the 20? Well, that's what I said. I'm going back to straight weight. So it's just hard to, hard to break habits, you know? No, you're uh, saying that sure. it's, not, it's not at 50 weight. You're saying it's probably lower than yeah. What if it like is? Maybe it is. I don't know. But then that's why you're not getting more. Because I did. I so I'm on 2050 now. The before that I went to briefly went to Hero Shell W100 plus. Shouldn't have did the plus. I'll tell you why later. Um, but uh, W100 and it seemed to be pressures were a little bit better. It seemed a little bit happier. And I did it through the summer. And it was like you know when you'd normally have oil pressure problems. So that was kind of nice. You could probably call the manufacturer and ask them what temperature it reaches that upper weight i know i could right? but it's like they're like why are you asking they would say temperature other weight now like, i'm gonna get the engineer on the phone <laughs> all right then we have uh oh oh yeah so uh i already said this full synthetic right i mentioned that that was mobile one mobile sorry av1 uh, fail. Why did it fail? Lead. All right. Uh, full synthetic was tried but failed. Aero shell. <laughs> yes, I, I write things for a purpose. Was tried but failed, but Aero shell found increased cylinder wear and mobile was sued. Who found the problem? Ah, <laughs> competitor. <laughs> wow. Uh, full synthetic such as mobile AV1 no longer available is a multi-viscosity synthetic oil with AD additive package similar to other AD oils. Synthetic oil has better lubricity or slipperiness than petroleum-based oil as well as several other advantages. What are those advantages? We already covered this. I'm not going to write it all down. Uh, does not what? Doesn't coke. Does not lose its viscosity with prolonged use. Better lubricity. On the other hand, synthetic oil strips off parts readily because of its low viscosity at room temperature and its extreme slipperiness. It is also 
it also is poor at cleaning because its molecules are too slippery to hold scavenged lead, carbon, and other particulates in suspension very well. It is this poor cleansing action, particularly with regard to lead, that was responsible for AV1 being withdrawn from the market. So that's a lot to write. I don't think I need to write all because we don't even have it. So it's more of a gee whiz thing. How come we don't have some full synthetic? Well, now you know. It does not work well with lead. It doesn't hold the contaminants. So not a good thing. Every single one of you has a car that has, that has an engine in it, has a nice big old fat. No, I shouldn't say that. You have an oil filter. They're not big and fat. Some of them are so small, I'm afraid I'd swallow it if I had to change it. <laughs> right? Yeah. And they're tiny. It's like, what the hell? Why, do anybody know why they make them so small? So you can buy an engine. Maybe. Not all airplanes have filters. I think Cooper's oil filter is just a hose. Right? At this point, it's just... <laughs> okay, so we did. I was like, I missed one. We didn't. We had straight mineral. We have mineral with the AD additive then we went to miss multiviscosity which comes in two flavors well three you can get it in mineral. straight mineral ashless dispersant or semi-synthetic semi anybody confused now semi-synthetic is also ashless dispersant yes yeah always yes it just so happens that it's because right there, the AeroShell 15W50 product is W15W50. They do not make this in a mineral, straight, uh, non-ashless dispersant formula. Does it also say this on those bottles? No, that's why I'm talking about it. Gosh, that's <laughs> crazy. Wouldn't it be easier? All right, so let's distill it down. It's actually easier than you think. You have a brand new engine that needs to be broken in. What is the factory going to tell you to put in it? Straight mineral. Straight. What are my two options? Really? 80 or 100. Those are pretty much. And, and we could throw in, I know that, like I said, Phillips makes their M version. But that's the only three I know, and that's a multi -vis. So otherwise, going to break it in on almost every manufacturer is going to use this right here. Right? So now you're done and you're ready to switch over to engine oil for the rest of your life. What are your choices? You have four, basically. Synthetic. You got, you got the synthetic. Ashless, not ashless, dispersant. Well, okay, here's two. I'll go back one. You got these two. You got the W80, W100. Uh -huh. Okay, it so said you got four choices. Straight weight. Straight weight or multi viscosity. You've got your Aeroshell 15W50, which happens to be. Ashless dispersant. Slash. Multi-viscosity. Now, what is this stuff here? The 15W50 is? 50-50 synthetic. All right, so back again. W80 straight weight, W100 straight weight, or AeroShell 15W50, which is? Semi-synthetic. Semi if you don't want to run semi-synthetic, then you go over to the XC and you get straight, you get regular mineral oil AD, which is? The XC2050. There's four choices. Those are your big four. It's rare to see anybody run anything other than that. Mm. See, so it's not as hard as you think. Right? Everybody's with me then? Yeah. So you have four choices. Until now. <laughs> <laughs> Manufacturers call by name. Will they say, like, for breaking, use AeroShell, like, by brand, like they'll say it, or no? Well, I do my own overhaul, so. That's fair. I just said Phillips I, XC. So, with... with it, are, are some of these oils specific to engines? Do they do, do you ever manufacture say like we want you to use this one? Is it never seen it. Depending on where you are. No, I've never seen them go out on that kind of limb. I think for reasons that if the oil gave them a problem, they would say, "Well, you're the one that chose that, not us." So I don't know. This where it doesn't give you a spec, like it's just. just They're all specs. It says like, use a, an oil that meets mill standards such and such. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So right, two choices for. Break in, sort of. You got the, air, the straight rate mineral, 80, 100, or throw in the M, which I don't know anybody uses it. Or you go to your ashless dispersant, you got your W80, W100, W15, W50, or the XC2050. Got it? Okay.
This down here is XC25 W60, which is used for what kind of engines? So it's right on the box, radio engines. Engineered for radio engines. The weight, all right, so what if I wanted to, and I'm like, ah, you know, my oil pressure's low. I think I'm just going to, instead of the 2050, I'm going to go to 20, 25 W60. Can I do that? I have to look at what my manufacturer allows me to use. If they don't have that on there, then I cannot. So, Say that again. You can't just, you're not supposed to just pour whatever you want in there. So, so if I decide I want to run 25W60 in my engine, I got to at least look at the manufacturers. Oh, in the non the, the, yeah, the in, Yeah, in my airplane. They do give you a spec. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a weight that they want. It does. They give you a recommended, like, um, it comes in the pilot's operating handbook. It'll say for this temperature, we recommend these. For this temperature, you can use these or those. So I actually looked through mine. I did not see 25W60 when I was doing this, just out of curiosity. All right, so we're good so far. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to throw things in, just make a little. Now we have additives. Let's talk about oil additives. Lycoming in their service instruction, all right, back up a little bit. Lycoming made this engine that was an integral lightweight crankcase engine that I think they used in only the 172s. And they made a 320 version and a 360, which I've never seen. So it was called the O320 H2AD. Now, that was a joke. Don't ever make AD part of your, because everything AD stands for everything's directive, right? So, um, or ashless dispersant, depends on what you're talking about. So anyway, this engine was prone to ADs. Oh my gosh, it had all the ADs on it. And it's a weird engine. Uh, what they tried to do is copy uh, automotive designs in this engine. Uh, for example, the rocker arms were stamped steel, which was on fulcrums, which is kind of a good idea when you consider our rocker arms. They, you know, they don't let you reface them. They just use the same old stupid rocker arms. At least with these, they were stamped steel. They were cheap. You threw them out, you bought new ones. Um, so there were problems with that. I forget what the AD made you do. Then there was a problem, the tappets. The cam ate up the tappets, just left and right. And the tappets were this style. It was like Cummings for attempt to do automotive style. You could pull them out, but it just ate them up, just left and right. So to fix that, you had to have the case bored out and put bigger tappets in. They called it the T-Mod. And there was all these ADs. Well, I guess the joke is now that if you get one of these engines and you actually do all of the ADs, Lycoming says it's one of their best engines now, finally, right? So, um, uh, the name of the engine again, sorry? Uh, 0320H2AD. So, after you completely change the engine, so with, the, with the H2AD, and I'm telling you this story, one of the things that they figured out is it needed an anti-scuff agent to keep the tappets from eating themselves up. So they came up with, I simply just call the uh, Lycoming oil additive, that damn, that additive. But its its true name is known as LW16702. That's what you call it, LW16702, because that is the part number of it. So this engine oil uh, is required in that particular engine, as well as some others. And now Lycoming wants you to use this in a lot of their engines. It's an option, but they highly recommend it. So for many years, you had to go out and buy this engine oil additive and pour it in. Well, finally, after, I don't know, decades, the engine oil manufacturers thought, what if we just sold it with the stuff already in it? And they called it the plus. So W100 is what kind of oil? Ashless dispersant. Ashless dispersant. The plus point. means that it has the LW LW sixteen one six seven zero two in it, the anti scuff agent. And then uh, Phillips followed suit with their Victory one hundred uh, ashless dispersant uh, stuff with this in there. So, but I don't I don't know. I run this here first. So this has the additive in it, the anti scuff additive, which Lycomings do like. Uh, the problem with this stuff is, and the reason why I shouldn't have put it in my engine, and I knew this, but I ordered it and I thought, it'd probably be okay. There's nothing wrong with it, but you may never run this particular oil, this additive, in any sort of engine that uses a wet clutch system that operates off of the engine oil. 
Follow? So if you have a helicopter or something that has a clutch system in it, clutches are plates that have to stick together and turn, you cannot use this stuff because it's too slippery and the clutches won't, won't want to stick together. Well, big bore continentals, uh, behind my engine I have about yay much room between that and the firewall. So there's no room for a starter because the starter's that long. So they run the starter 90 degrees out. So I'm the pilot, I sit here, I got the crankshaft, starter sits this way, and it, when it winds up, it winds up a worm gear on a brass, another gear that's got a big spring on it that tightens up around a drum that then engages into the accessory case that starts the prop. So I do have a spring and a clutch system in there, and that needs to grip. And so I have heard some people saying that this oil causes that to not grip very well. I did not experience that. Mine seems to grip just fine, but I thought, eh, better say safe to sorry. So I won't run the plus anymore, but there. All right, so now we have more oils to add. And I, yeah. Uh, 1976, I think, because they call it the 76 series. Oh, just that year when they that. Um, I don't know about that. All right. Where are we? Full synthetic, we talked about that. Uh, then we talked about special oils. Uh, let's see. Lycoming advises... The use of LW16702 anti scuff slash anti wear. Now, why you put the cam guard in? Does the cam guard not have that same property of. Correct, cam guard's different. So I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, in quote, all Lycoming. Piston aircraft engines except for except for installations that utilize a friction type clutch and a common engine oil system for the transmission and clutch assembly. That's a lot to write. For installations um, what were they? that utilize that a friction type clutch, which would preclude any fixed wing aircraft. This is me rotary wing stuff. Uh, figure <coughs> clutch. I'll just put and a common. Um, oil system that's enough to get the point across so if the transmission uses the engine oil and you got a clutch in it you don't use the anti scuff you could ruin the ruin the clutch assembly all Lycoming <laughs> piston aircraft engines, except for installations that utilize a friction type clutch and a common engine oil system. Advises. Um, yeah, Lycoming, I'm not gonna write that. And it was first used in the H model 0320s, use a different type of lifter rocker arms. Um, let me see, so that would be Aeroshell what? 100 plus. W100 plus, W80 plus, um, Phillips Victory, and last one was Aeroshell what? May remember? It's 15W50? Yeah. It comes in there already. So when we put oil in our engines, we have to, we're going to use a plus? Are you trying to break in your engine or not break in your engine? Okay. Not trying to break in. 
So would you want the plus? That would be the worst thing. Because you want what? You want some scuff on those piston rings. So this would be a terrible thing to use for break-in. Do you have to use the plus if you have a Lycoming? Yeah, I think the only one that has to use it is that H2 AD. I think they have to buy an AD. So if you take it, if you do a, a service like change a piston or a cylinder or something like that, then you and the engine already has time on it. Oh, that's a great done, question. Do you, do you then start running a straight mineral oil? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Or say you wonderful take it, question. Take it apart and just put it back. That I was hoping nobody got. No, I'm glad you asked because I forgot. All right. So that is a very, very common scenario. <coughs> you have one cylinder that goes out, and so you send it out, and you have that cylinder honed and re-ringed. So does that cylinder now act as though it's brand new? Yeah, it's got to be brand new. So does that be broken in? <laughs> Absolutely it does. So if you have a turbocharged engine, which oil do you use? What does they specify for a turbocharged engine, Lycoming? Non-straight. Non Non-straight, yes. Access they want so now that made the choice easy. You don't get a choice, right? Okay, but let's just say it's in a 172, something like that, you know, which were not turbocharged. So what are you going to use? Well, herein lies the problem. Do you now want to go back to running straight mineral oil on the other three cylinders and that engine for 25, 50 hours? No. I don't. And that was one of the beauties of using, and for whatever reason, the XC2050 from ECI said, no, just run it. It just works fine. Don't worry about it. So we just always use the 2050. And then it was, if you needed a cylinder change, you just kept running the 2050. But I don't know, you know, you could take that thought a step further and say, well, does that mean that maybe the 2050 doesn't act as slippery and as good as one W100? Maybe that's not the oil to use. I don't know. So to, what's, what's your, to answer your question just outright, kind of depends on the owner mechanics desires. I think that, well, I, I should know the answer to this. It's not I had to make the decision all the time. If I only had to do one cylinder, I wouldn't want to just run. I wouldn't want to go back to mineral. I would, I would use the ashless dispersant. That cylinder can suck it up. That cylinder can suck it up. But that's not everybody's opinion. And I would present it to the client and say, well, these are, you know, these are the options. This is the pros and the cons. I mean, do you want to run straight mineral in the rest of your 90% of your engine? Or you want to cater to this one thing? Do you want to go with you know, W100, not the plus, that's for sure. And, you know, for the best, that's what I would shoot for, personally. All right, so let me see, special oils, let me see, anti-scuff, additives. Okay, then we've got, um, I cut out a bunch of stuff. Um, light sport. Light sport oils. Now we got light sports to deal with. I know. I say the same thing. Ew. Why well, is this locked up now? You take it back. Something is like making my computer angry here. Let me see. I want this. I can't wait till y'all are old and you're like, I can't get a medical. Well, guess what? You can fly. I like sports. You were certificated. They weren't. What? Are you, are you, you know what? I'll make my own experimental lights for it. It's like weird. Weird. experimental. You do all this weird shit. 